Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm happy to have you here with me today in the kitchen where we are going to make another recipe out of this Amish cooking cookbook. I really like this cookbook. It has wonderful recipes in it. So far, everything I've tried, I have enjoyed. The recipe that we're going to make today, I was flipping through this cookbook and I came across this recipe and it made me smile and it's called Chelsea buns. <laughs> so we are going to make some Chelsea buns today. So these are cinnamon buns, but they are definitely a different kind of cinnamon bun than I have ever made before. Completely different recipe uh, for the bread part of the cinnamon bun or the bun part, as well as for the filling. One of the ingredients it does call for, which is something that I rarely use. In fact, the only reason that I have any of this ingredient is for candy making, and that is corn syrup. And I have had this sitting in my pantry for a couple of years now, so I really need to get it used up. So when I saw this recipe called for it, I decided where I would normally omit it and probably just use some extra brown sugar. In place of it, I decided I would just get this used up since it's, like I said, it's been sitting on the pantry shelf for a while. The dough of this recipe is unlike any kind of dough I've ever made for a cinnamon bun recipe before. It actually calls for potatoes. So that's not an uncommon addition to bread recipes, but it certainly is, at least for me, when it comes to cinnamon buns. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how this recipe turns out in the end. So we're starting out with a greased nine by 13 cake pan. Let's jump over to the other side of the kitchen and make the dough so that that can start rising while we work on making the filling. This recipe calls for mashed potatoes. So I cooked up a couple of potatoes earlier, mashed them up and then cooled them off because we are going to be mixing our yeasting in with this and we don't want the heat of those potatoes to kill our yeast. This cookbook uses a one tablespoon for one package of yeast, whereas now I think it's two and a quarter teaspoons for a package of yeast. This calls for one whole tablespoon for a package of yeast. So that is something that I'd just like to point out if you are using old cookbooks, make sure that you go through and read all the extra tips and tricks that they have in them because normally they will tell you what um, the conversion rates are going to be and they will be different than what you're used to seeing in modern day cookbooks just because measurements have changed over the years so that's something to keep in mind. I use an anchor Schramm mixer and these mixers have two different ways of kneading bread so there's the dough hook and this is used generally for softer breads like the one that I'm going to be making and then it has the roller over here that's used for kneading more dense breads. Always put the scraper on because that is one of the best parts of this machine, the fact that it scrapes the sides down by itself. Into this, we're going to add half a cup of our mashed potatoes. So this is just potatoes. I didn't add milk or butter or anything like that into them. And I'm not going to double this recipe because it's the first time I've ever made it. And I want to make sure it's good first before I make too much of it. We're going to add a teaspoon of sugar to our potatoes. <laughs> well, hello there, Alex. A half a cup of water. So I'm just going to mix this together quickly. And onto this, I'm going to sprinkle a tablespoon of yeast. We'll let that yeast rehydrate and get a little foamy. And while that's happening, we're going to beat up <laughs> two eggs. And while that is getting all foamy over there, I wanted to give you an update on our kombucha that we're starting here. So this is a process that I've been showing over the last couple of videos where I am creating a kombucha scoby out of a store-bought kombucha. So what I will do is put together a blog post where I spell out exactly how to do all of this. When can I have that out? I'll have that out for you next week. And that way you can go through and actually see all the steps if you've missed any of the videos with the steps. But what I'm going to do right now is give this a little bit of a taste and see if we're getting to the point where I can start a full entire batch of kombucha the way you would traditionally with using starting just with a scoby. 
So what we're going to do now is give this a little taste and see where we're at as far as our flavor and our fizz and see if we're at the point where this is strong enough that I feel confident to start a full gallon jars worth with it. Oh, that's really good. Mm. That's super good. There's definitely some fizz happening, but it is still really sweet. So I can leave it to ferment, I would say probably for four more days or so before we start our big gallon jar. So I'm just going to put this back in a warm place to sit and develop a little bit more. We've got some foam action happening over here so we can add the rest of our ingredients. We need, we need a third, cup sugar, our two beaten eggs, a third a cup of melted butter, and remember to make sure that this is cooled down as well, a half a teaspoon of salt, and two and a half cups of flour, which we'll add just a little bit at a time. So we're gonna turn our mixer on get these ingredients mixed together. So this calls for two and a half cups of flour, but what we're looking for is a soft dough. So we'll add the two and a half cups and then more if required. And then we want to knead it until it's smooth and elastic between four and eight minutes, depending on what kind of flour you're using, how much moisture you have in it. I don't think this is going to take as long because it is a pretty soft dough. There we go. This comes with a scraper that is perfectly shaped to go around the edge. So I'm just gonna scrape off all of our extra dough here and then add a little bit of oil to the bottom of this and rise my dough right in here. We're gonna let this rise until it's double in size. So now for the next bit, we're going to make this syrup and put that on the bottom and then lay our buns on top of that. So this is also something that I have never done for cinnamon buns before. Okay, so we need two tablespoons of soft butter, which I happen to have right here. Three quarters cup of brown sugar. Quarter cup of corn syrup. Half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then we're going to take this and spread it in the bottom of our pan. We're going to sprinkle, in this case, some pecans, a half a cup, and we'll set this aside. So I thought what we could do while we are waiting for our dough to rise, because we have almost an hour of time to kill, is we're going to go down to the high tunnel and I'm gonna show you some of the things that we have going on down in the high tunnel. I did get it painted the other day and I just think it looks so pretty. I'll show you that, but I thought we could also do a little bit of winter sewing and I'll talk more about that when we get down there. It's not technically spring until tomorrow. It is the 20th today, so we are still winter sewing. <laughs> so let me show you. I have the doors painted on both sides. You can see the other side and I think it just looks so much more cheerful and just pretty and it matches my little greenhouse. And then I also painted, I don't know if you can see it, way over there, my root cellar door. It looks really cute. We still don't have the plastic on because we are replacing what we had on it, which was this um, typical greenhouse plastic. It will be staying on the roof though, but we wanted to put something more durable on both sides because we have a lot of wind that blows through here and it's constantly blowing off the plastic. So we did have to order it though, and it won't be here for probably another week. So we're just stuck with it being all open for now. If you're familiar with my high tunnel, this trellis is down. I still have the trellis on this side, 
but we are removing this one. I'm going to be planting my peppers here this year. And when we get to the point of actually planting them, I'll explain a little bit more about how I'm changing the configuration of the high tunnel this year. But right now, let's do a little planting. So the idea, as far as I understand it, like I said, I've never done it before, and I haven't honestly done a lot of research on it either. I'm just kind of winging it here, is to plant seeds that are fairly cold hardy that can handle coming up before your last frost date and putting them in an environment in which they can have a little bit of protection from that frost and a little bit of extra heat. So what I decided to do, I bought a whole bunch of these little plastic domes here to cover my seedling trays. And in all the years I've been starting seedlings, I've never really used these and I have never really had an issue. But I thought this year I had an opportunity to buy some of them for a really good price. So I thought I would give them a try and use them, which I did do for a few of my trays, but I honestly didn't find, at least in my growing situation, that it made a really big difference. I guess the germination was maybe a little bit better. It did help with not having to water as frequently at the very beginning, but I also found that it encouraged mold and algae growth a little bit more than I've seen not using them. So I'm not going to be using them. So I needed something to do with them <laughs> since I bought quite a few of them. And I thought doing winter sowing would be the perfect use for these because they are definitely like a little mini greenhouse. And I've decided to put them inside of my high tunnel to give them even a little bit of extra protection. And by the end of the week or next week, we'll have the covers on both sides. So it'll be even warmer in here. So I thought this would probably be the perfect use for them. So I'm gonna actually get a fairly decent amount of um, soil prepared here just nice and softened up smoothed out and any extra weeds and things that are growing in here taken out again like i said this is just an experiment so i decided to experiment with a couple of different things i thought that i would do some microgreens I have been starting microgreens inside for the last couple of years and have never quite frankly been very successful <laughs> with doing it. I'm not sure why, because I am able to start all the seeds for my garden in the in my grow room without any issues, but I just I just haven't quite gotten into the swing of doing microgreens. So needless to say, I have lots of microgreen seeds, so I thought this might be a great opportunity to try them, doing them outside like this. So I'm gonna try that. I'm also going to do some lettuce, going to do some spinach and some kale. I have a whole bunch of kale seed that I saved. So I thought I would do these as baby greens and I have lots of them. I have way more than these. So I just thought, well, give that a try as well. So I'm just going to use this to mark the space that I have to work with for starting them. So I'm just gonna plant these as densely as I would if I was planting them in trays in the house. Maybe we'll throw some arugula in there too. They're gonna to grow at a different rate, but this is just a fun experience. experiment. So we will just wing it. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of soil on the top of these, not a ton, just a smidge. Next up, we'll do our kale. So I'm basically just gonna do the same thing here where I'm going to put these seeds in densely. And then I have a ton of these winter density lettuce seeds. So I'm going to plant one of these similarly to what I'm doing to have baby greens. And then I'm going to plant some of them divide it out a little bit and grow them up to actually be full heads of lettuce. I do start lettuce early inside uh, so that I have early lettuce, but this will be super early if this actually works. So same thing, I'm just gonna put a little bit of soil on the top of these. It's amazing to be working in the soil this time of year and not have my hands freezing. I actually have the ground thawed and workable craziness. 
No, that wasn't winter density actually. That was the salad bowl. This one's the winter density here. And give these a little pat down. And then I am going to go grab my watering can, give them a water and cover them up. dirt up around the sides of these just to help hold them down a little bit. At least until I get the plastic on because there's going to be wind blowing through here. So now we just wait and see. Can I just say that having my hands in the soil like that and planting outside pretty awesome. <laughs> My cows are all laying, having a little nap, and I don't know if you can see way over there, but maple and oakley are also there as well. They really do love their cows. Okay, let's head back up to the house. We have about 20 minutes left before our buns are going to be ready to roll out. Oh, did I tell you we're going to be finishing the bunkie this week? I'm so excited about that. And then we are going to be able to start having people to use it up here, which is even more exciting than getting the bunkie finished. I normally don't eat breakfast until between 10 and 11 in the morning. I just get busy in the morning and I'm not usually hungry until around now. And if I'm just going to make something really quick and easy for myself, it's usually something like this or a couple pieces of toast and a couple of eggs. But since I had the potatoes, I decided to do this instead. And while I was waiting for this to cook and waiting for the bread to rise, oh, I forgot to turn my element off. I did do some more planting. So let me show you what I planted. Some California Wonder, uh, some self-blanching cauliflower and some Copenhagen, early Copenhagen market cabbages, scarlet kale, dark boar kale, abundance kale, and then some China gold Napa cabbages back here. So as you can see, these aren't covered with soil yet. I'll cover them up when I take them down to the grow room, but just about done seed starting for March. I am going to wait probably another week before I get the rest of my tomatoes started. The tomatoes that we started together Two weeks ago now was it two weeks ago the early ones have all germinated most of them have germinated anyway and i am already getting a set of true leaves on them which makes me really happy and the peppers came up day before yesterday or something like that so we are well on our way to our 2024 garden which is very exciting so now i'm just going to quickly eat this up and then we will go and roll out our dough and get our buns rising again. So we need a quarter cup of softened butter, a tablespoon of cinnamon, three quarters cup brown sugar, and a cup of raisins. And I'm not going to use raisins because most of us don't like raisins in our baked goods. Have our quarter cup of brown sugar here, a quarter cup of butter. That's more melted than softened. That's all right. <laughs> tablespoon of cinnamon. And mix this all up. And now we're going to roll our dough out. This is a really lovely feeling dough. It's so soft. And now we'll roll them up. And I like using unflavored dental floss for cutting one inch. These are little, little tiny buns. It looks lovely, doesn't it? So now we're going to let these rise until they fill the pan. So now we get to clean up our mess and wait around 60 minutes, 45 to 60 minutes or so 
for those to double in size again. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. We're supposed to dump them out onto here. look pretty tasty, don't they? Little butter. Wow, so far this recipe book hasn't had a fail yet. These are so good. <laughs> mm, absolutely delicious. Another winner from the Amish cooking cookbook. Fantastic. I will definitely be making these again. I will probably omit the corn syrup and just use butter and some extra brown sugar. They would be just as good without it. What it offers is a little bit of chewy kind of candy flavor, which makes sense. But this bread, like the bun part of it is so soft and delicious. Definitely give these ones a try. These are so good. All right, friends, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.